Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Dancing goofy, like always. Guys, thanks for <laughs> tuning in, watching or listening, wherever you're doing it. YouTube, the podcast app, SoundCloud, and as always, you guys can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, streaming some sweet games. I'm so proud of you. Crispy you games. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. That was good. Uh, yeah, we do have new new content over there uh, with our good Ooh, friends Alex I and my Arts. Beforehand, I can't see a thing. <laughs> it is foggy. <laughs> um, Alex just launched a new series, Road to Under Winds. It's awesome. You should Road go check fun. it out. Uh, awesome. Parks has also been doing some of the Vintage Cube stuff, um, oh, yeah. and I believe they're both going to be starting some Hours of Devastation drafts uh, mm. very soon. Trying to devastate so, some hours. Yeah. Double, <laughs> double stage stuff. Good. So I'm excited to see those. Yes, I love me too. ours. I think it's going to be a fun draft set. Uh, it's yes. I I, I want to pick it up again. Having left pre-release. Yeah. Uh, a, a beaten man. A beaten man. Um, Except in one instance. Yes. <laughs> but I'm, I'm eager to pick it up again and, and see what I can do. And <laughs> hopefully I can open it and pull uh, a particular card. We'll talk a little bit later. Oh, very, very soon. Soon, okay. very soon. Yeah. Um. So but. today is the standard limited episode, yeah, and actually, Wednesday. you have a deck tech for us today, which we'll get into in a well, little bit. Well, sort of me. I'll preface it before we go into it. Okay. I can't. I Fair can't enough. claim it to be original content, and I would That's not fun. want to. I'm not smart enough to make this deck. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Right. Before we go to that, uh, we of course have our random card of the day. Yay. Uh, this is always interesting. The last one was very interesting. <laughs> Oh, Let's man. see what we get this I, was, <laughs> I just remembered what it was. All right, guys. Yeah. Three, two, one. Ancient Ziggurat. Uh, uh, call back to Warcraft. <laughs> the undead race. <laughs> um, Build more Ziggurat. So this is a land from Conflux. Uh, it's an uncommon land. It's add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to play creature spells. So, I mean, it's not terrible. It's, <sighs> no. it's in a creature-heavy deck you're good really right? good really good limited mana fix yeah, limited. Great limited really good limited super um, good limited um don't think you'd play this constructed really no because you you can play your colors in although constructed. okay um this was also printed as a friday night magic special and in the slivers premium deck and i buy the argument for slivers sure okay yeah yeah um, slivers definitely. that makes a lot more sense to me um and it is a three 350 as far as price range goes okay so uh, i mean that's Miss it must have more merit than we're giving it, but um, well, I mean, I do think in slivers it's yeah, great. you played in commander for sure, yeah. Um, limited back in the day, I don't think anyone's really drafting conflux anymore, but mm -hmm. prove me wrong. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, you should draft conflux, we could, I'd be, be so cool I'd be down for that. Um, and actually, during conflux, things were like very weirdly colored. That was when like hybrid mana was mm -hmm. super popular, and so yeah. uh, this would have made a lot of sense at that time, I think. Probably, um, uh, but I don't not like it. I just no, it's you fine. know it's just not found its way into an eternal format. Is the, is the no, thing? No, I mean right? it's not. You're not going to see this in like Legacy or mm -mm. Vintage nothing, or nothing Modern or anything like that. Definitely not. Um, <laughs> maybe a very rogue modern deck. That's the only place I would consider Sliv it. modern slivers. Modern slivers, <laughs> uh, which is a deck. Yeah. It's not a very good deck. Mm, um, sorry no. guys. <laughs> it's a bummer. Um, I, I want think we to were break suggested slivers. slivers on our modern deck deck. We will do slivers eventually, probably, because yeah. I really, really like slivers. I, mean, I like slivers a lot, but I just not. I prefer popper slivers. I think they're probably stronger there anyway. They're right? really good in popper. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. It um, is. So, ancient cigarette. Um, don't hate it. Pretty yeah, hard. I mean, it's not bad. Um, it's interesting. That's for sure. Uh, so, all right. This is a standard episode. You have a deck for us. You're prefacing it with... Right. So, I'm subscribed to a bunch of very intelligent, very cool creators on YouTube. One of them... Oh, no. ...is not us. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't... I'm stealing our own things. <laughs> no. Um, Dez from SBMTG. Strictly Better MTG. Uh. This guy... A plus, and he's always wearing like a Disney shirt, which I really like. <laughs> yeah, they're sweet. I want to ask him where he gets his shirts because they are dope. Um, but <laughs> that being said, um, Des likes to do budget deck techs now and then. And Kevin, I know how much you like Mill. I do like Mill, and That's I know how excited you got for Frank Sanity. Yeah. So I thought, what better way to share Des's creation mm -hmm. 
than to share it on our podcast. Maybe get him a little, little recognition, a little traffic from All this right. awesome, awesome deck. Okay. Um, he showed me a card that I had not seen from Shadows Over Innistrad, um, mm-hmm. which is pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, I think you're going to like it. Okay. Let's jump into it. Um, I don't think he's named it, and I'm definitely not going to come up with a name for him. Um, and this is a budget deck. There is one change that I would make personally, and we'll get into that in a second. Okay. Um, but we're going to go over it. Um, so this deck is about $40, 50 ish dollars right now. So okay. super budget. Yeah, super budget. Um, you That's can pick awesome. up all of these things in a second. Um, well, Frank Sanity wants, you know, hours drops. Yeah, yeah. In Wednesday, now, when this goes live. So tomorrow? Thursday? Or is it already out? What? No, it's not out yet. Dates, it's out this weekend. Dates are hard. Uh, <laughs> right. So anyhow, um, <laughs> this deck really runs off of two cards. Its okay. engine cards are Frank Sanity, of course. And Startled Awake. Let's go over Frank Sanity first. A okay. little reminder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frank Sanity is two colorless, one blue. Mm-hmm. Enchantment. It is an aura curse that says, the beginning of each end step, uh, Enchanted Player mills the top X cards of his or her library, where mm-hmm. X was the total cards milled. Yeah. Essentially. So it basically doubles the amount of mills you get in a turn. Right. Double Pretty mills. Pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. It's sweet. We talked cool about card. it um, Monday. No, yeah, sorry. Last, last Sunday. Last Sunday with our Oh, last Sunday. You're Kiki, correct. With uh, our Kiki, Kiki Weekly. Uh, Frank Sanity and Traumatize mm-hmm. is a, Being an instant kill. kind of an instant win sort of zap, a thing. Zap, Yeah. Yeah. Mill their deck. Seems good. <laughs> <laughs> Seems okay. That's what you want to do in a mill deck. Um, one, some people's criticism for mill is that you just make it harder for yourself because now they're playing with 60 life instead of yeah and i kind of i kind of buy that however this this card really like poo poos on that poo poos on that poo poos okay you heard i like that poo poos poo poos yeah frank sanity is dope it's a really (laughs) sweet card i think it's gonna spike eventually um because people are gonna try to test it in modern and maybe make that modern deck yeah, the, it yeah, might give it the I think thing that it might needs. Actually be a thing. Um, even though enchantments are kind of vulnerable, you can side for it. It'll still mm-hmm. make it kind of tough. So, Startled Awake. That's the second card in this kind of package. And boy, is it cool. Okay. So, Startled Awake <laughs> is first a sorcery, okay. then a creature. Oh, it's a flip. It is a flip. Okay. Re, I'll re, I'll listen to this sucker. <laughs> so the sorcery, Startled Awake, says target opponent puts the top 13 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Oh. Okay. Then activated ability, three colorless, two blue, put Startled Awake from your graveyard onto the battlefield, transform, activates the ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. Okay. okay. Turns into Persistent Nightmare. Okay. Which has Skulk, cannot be blocked with... Uh, by creatures with greater power. Okay. It is a 1-1, one, one, so that's pretty good evasion. Yeah. Uh, it says, when Persistent Nightmare deals combat damage to a player, return it to its owner's hand. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, repeated with Frank Sanity, 26 card mills. 26 card mills. That's awesome. You, of course, run a play set of each. Because <laughs> that's no. just sweet. Oh, buddy. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you double up on Frank Sanities. Oh, they stack. They stack. Oh, they stack. Oh my gosh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, they stack. Holy crap, that's amazing. Yes, that is. Uh, ooh. Oh, I'm gonna make this deck. spicy. We're, you're gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. She's gonna make it. They gonna make it. All right, this might get me back into standard. Bring it, bring it on, buddy. Come that's on, so right? cool. Just I, that's two cards in the deck. Well, I already like it. That's all you need. You know what else you like, Kev? We can stop the episode now. You're good. All right, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what else you like, Kev? Mm. You like counters. A little. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Let's talk about some. Uh, okay. So for counters, you get uh, one of the sweet new cards, um, Countervailing Winds. Okay. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, counter target spell, unless uh, opponent pays X colorless, where X is the amount of cards in your graveyard. Now it's not their graveyard. Mm, okay. Your graveyard, I believe. Yes, it's right. It's your graveyard. Okay. <laughs> No, that's true. Um, play set of sensor. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, but that's that's the uh, really the only counters you get. Now, here is my change that I'd add to this deck, and this might take it out of the budget realm, but not really. Um, I would like commit to memory in this, yeah. only for commit. Really, it just gives you other outs mm-hmm. that you exactly. wouldn't normally get. So, I yeah, no, I agree with that. Exactly. So commit says uh, put target spell uh, second from the top 
of target players library mm -hmm. so they're casting their sphinx of the final word commit it goes bloop under the second or under the first card in the top mm -hmm. and then you mill them for whatever yeah although it's worth noting sphinx of the final word will be rotating out this weekend oh true but you don't have to worry example. about that anymore. Just an example. <laughs> it could be anything. No, but you're right. I think you know? that that's a very good argument. I think commits Glory a bringer, huge upgrade. Whatever. Yeah, um, uh, uh, commit seems cool. Now, it, memory kind of dies. However, yeah. you have an out to that kind of issue. Problematic thing. Uh, abandoned sarcophagus, and I'm not. This is not a perfect like fix for that. Uh, abandoned sarcophagus, sarcophagus says you may cast non-land cards with cycling from your graveyard. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. If a card with cycling would be put into your graveyard from anywhere and it wasn't cycled, exile it instead. Interesting. So it's kind of encouraging yeah. you to cycle it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought it was all players, but it is not. Okay. Um, it is just you. So no, that, there is no out. Memory okay. is just dead in this deck. But yeah, yeah. commit, I think, is interesting. I think it's worth it. It's interesting enough to play right. around. That kind of works as removal. Mm -hmm. uh there are other there's other removal options in the deck we'll get yeah, into yeah. but that acts sort of as a a more permanent yeah and it's not foolproof and it kind of takes a lot to set up but it's me gusta me gusta yeah See? okay <laughs> uh so yeah those are the two counters i would add commit just because it's sweet um but you also get a bunch of cyclers to find a lot of your things, like sensor cycles. Um, countervailing winds is a cycler. Uh, four compelling arguments you'll also run in here. Yes. Guys, it happened. Oh, it hit a deck. boy. Finally. <laughs> it, it would only have to be milled. Like, that's the I only know. place you take it. Guys, right? I love this card. Yeah. It's not good at all, but I love it. <laughs> oh, but. In this deck, it's good. How does milling for 10 for well, two Well, that's the thing. Sound? That seems awesome. 10? What about, uh, oh, shoot. I don't know. 15? 20? How many Frank Sanders you got? A up million! There? <laughs> Eventually. Um, <laughs> yes, this, I mean, I obviously found his home in Mill. It's the yeah. only place it would fit, so, <laughs> duh. Um, uh, hieroglyphic Illumination is another cycle. Yeah. Um, and card drop, you need it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that you'd necessarily always cast this, but you're going to be out of. Out. You'd cast it for a card draw. Yeah, like I it. mean, I think if you've got the mana and you don't have anything yeah. else to do, you do it, yeah. but otherwise you cycle. On it step, yeah. I was hard on Hieroglyphic Illumination because mm -hmm. it felt like a really bad um, divination, but... It's, the cycling gives you outs. It's not terrible. Yeah, it's better than, it's better than divination. Um, Abandoned Sarcophagus, like I said, just lets you play things you've cycled from your yard, mm -hmm. uh, which is sweet. So you cycle your uh, compelling argument and then you just play it. Yeah, that's cool. Full value. Draw a card. Really, that turns it into a three mana spell if you think about it like that. Yeah. Draw a card and mill them five. And then hopefully five more with Frank Sanity. That's the key. Yes. At least five more. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's talk about some removal. Uh, you get uh, three Unsummon, four Winds of Rebuke, and yeah. four Engulf the Shore. Okay. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Unsummon, of course, powerhouse. Super efficient. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Uh, Winds of Rebuke, kind of the same thing. Yeah. Right? As Unsummon. Yeah. Um, you draw a card with Winds of Rebuke. Do you uh, know yes. Okay. You do. So it's a three mana, two colorless, one blue, target permanent, top yeah. of draw card. Um, so <laughs> it's a little, it's way more expensive. I don't know if you necessarily, and that's, there's three unsummoned, four wins. So yeah. it's an interesting choice. You can this play, is an interesting choice. Yeah, you can play around with that. Again, this is the strictly budget version. So you can put plenty of other things in it. Sure. Um, there's four Engulf the Shore. Now, Engulf the Shore is. Uh, kind of a field sweeper, but it's just to their hand, so it's a field bounce, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, Engulf the Short says, return to their owner's hands. All creatures with toughness less than or equal to the number of islands you control. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and yeah. it's mostly islands in this deck. You run, I believe, 23 islands. Wow. I want to say. It's a pretty oh, high yeah. land count, but I guess that makes sense. You're looking uh, excuse to me, excuse me, I'm sorry. 21 lands, okay. 18 islands, 3 Ipnu Rivulets. Okay. Rivulets. It's the mill spell yeah. land thing. Yeah. You mill just can, spell land thing? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to call them yet. The spell lands. It's the blue one that mills them for four. Something that yeah. doesn't feel mill good. Mill spell land thing. I like it. I, t t quick tangent. I'm not... I like that they put, like, sorcery spells on lands. Yeah, but... I don't like how much it costs. Yeah. I don't like that they're all bad. They are all really bad. Uh, um, it's a yeah, neat... Yeah, I don't really like them that much as... 
I like the idea. Yeah. I don't like the ones. That right. That's what I'm saying. I'm not not a huge <laughs> fan of the execution, but I like the, the effort. Yeah. You know? Sure. The desert thing just feels clunky. Yeah, I think so. I agree. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anywho. Anywho. Um, <laughs> you also get uh, some other counters that I forget to mention. Essence Scatter and Disallow. Oh, okay. Two Essence Scatter, three Disallow. Uh, creatures are going to be your biggest problem. Yeah. So you that obviously want that to get rid of them. Disallow because you can't really deal with planeswalkers if they resolve. Um, you can with winds. I think it's target permanent, but unsummon is target creature. So yeah, it yeah. gives you a few more outs. Right. It's a little bit tricky. Um, out of curiosity. Yes. Well, I'll I'll actually put this on hold until you're done. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the sideboard. Uh, mm -hmm. One extra unsummon in case you know really aggro creature deck. Two ceremonious rejection. Uh, which does? It's a great question. Uh, <laughs> one dispel also for um, just going up against control decks, which sure. again are also a little bit cumbersome to deal with. Um, I should know what ceremonies rejection does. I have a few. Um, I do think dispel is one of those cards that I think is pretty useful in a lot of sideboards, and I think can be undersided. Um, mm. I think a lot of people don't like to put more than one or two in a sideboard, and I'm not saying yeah. you should always put a playset of Dispel in, not, not at all, but um, you're going to run into cards that you get to just one mana counter, and more yeah. often than that's not, not instance, yeah. it's it's something that like I think needs to be there if you're playing blue. Um, well, yeah, um, the mirror match for blue, <laughs> um, I ran into this one night yeah. playing at a tournament. Um, mirror matches for blue especially control yeah. are tricky tricky to navigate yeah. and they turn into really it feels almost like a novel where there's a rising action and then a, <laughs> a climax of things happen and someone is trying to resolve a win con mm -hmm. and you know if they stick it they pretty much got it so yeah it's yeah. like counter 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 you counter. get just counters right. on the stack like crazy um, I, it's really cool it's um, fun. The fight is definitely won or lost yes. on the stack, which is cool. It's neat. Um, unless you play America Control, and then you can just cast it out. That's fair. Which is sort of my point um, that I was going to mention. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it to splash into other colors with this deck? Yeah, that's a good point. That's, and it's a good question to ask. Um, I fear mm -hmm. that this deck is so simple and straightforward that splashing to have answers kind of muddles it a little okay. bit. Um, you've got you say it muddles the mixture. Genius, uh, <laughs> guys. <laughs> uh, I would though, honestly. That's a good, uh, good, good phrase. I do. I do. It's I'm right sorry, there. Guys. I understand. I understand. Um, I don't hate you any more than I did they before might, I walked in. No, that's in. okay. Um, but uh, yeah. So. In deck building, you know mm -hmm. you don't want to try to do too much. You can sure. kind of model it, confuse your deck a little bit, and yeah. you don't really want to. You don't want to do that if you don't have to. Um, there are better answers for like cast out. You yeah. get um, well, and that's specifically is the card that I'm thinking of solely because you mentioned there is no real out mm -hmm. to planeswalkers. Yeah. Um, at least does commit hit any permanent? Yes, it's target spell. It's target spell. Okay, mm -hmm. so that that makes sense you can right. sort of give yourself an out there but again you you have to commit it then mill it if you just cast out is it worth it to have that as an option do you think well if it's just cast out that feel that's a really weak splash no it is i'm just saying i cast out or anything else i, I don't know what else is in white at the moment because i don't really i mean you could make standard, an argument but... <laughs> for cast out and spell queller i think spell queller could yeah make it in this deck. spell queller seems really good okay i was just wondering yeah. yeah if if there is a consideration for a splash yeah. in a deck like this that does slow down your mill game a little bit right because what right. do you what do you take out for those cards is my next question like well, are so, you taking out counters for quellers? Maybe are you taking out unsummons for cast outs? I think you would take out um, Winds of Rebuke for cast out, probably like do two and two maybe. Um, two buke, two buke, two, two buke. cast out. Um, okay, <laughs> two buke. Um, two buke. And then two buke. I think you're exactly right. You could take out a few counters for the spell quellers because right. they sort of act as their own counter, um, and of, it also yeah. just gives you a creature on the board, which helps slow down some of the sure. the the early game decks where they're just sort of aggroing mm -hmm. you in um hopefully that would give you an out to a little bit more is what i would think right right um, i don't know if that's true but yeah. that's just maybe an idea to play with a little bit yeah it's definitely worth testing with. um it's worth figuring out and yeah. again for so cheap 
mm-hmm. you can buy it and play it tomorrow. Yeah, easy. Yeah, it's pretty cheap. And their cards you're going to be able to find most likely pretty easily. Probably, yeah. Again, except for Frank Sanity. But yeah. you can proxy those for now. Heck, maybe we should. Um, <laughs> and more on that in a moment. Um, but we'll just go through the rest of the sideboard. Four Spontaneous Mutation. Three Negate. Again, mm-hmm. more counters for control and yada, yada, yada. Uh, an Essence Scatter. Two Crook of Condemnation and one Baral's Expertise. Kind of for top end and sure. Get That's cool. Stuff. Yeah. You know, it, just, it does what sideboards do, answers yeah, things. Exactly. Yeah. That it seems like a cool deck. It does. Um, This guy, if Kevin, if you've not heard of him, um, <laughs> is exceptional. Yeah. It can turn three or four mil win. Can it really? Yes. Really? I'm going to read you this little blur. Oh, buddy. <laughs> <clears throat> if I can unlock my phone. You got this. Here's how Dez breaks it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, bu- 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 <laughs> turn three, beautiful. Frank Sanity. Turn four, Startle Awake. Turn five, Startle Awake equals 52 cards milled. Oh my gosh. Well, wow. Three, Frank Sanity. Turn four, Startle Awake. Turn five, put a Persistent Nightmare into play. Turn six, Unsummon Nightmare. Mm. Cast Startle Awake. So here's another question then. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to ramp into this to get it a turn sooner if you add green? Um, there could be. I don't know. I don't know exactly it's, what the outs would be. Wizards but. has taken a really hard stance against mana dorks. In yeah, they have. Realizing that yeah. they restrict them, they specify them. They. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is like you've got dorks from cons that say, um, there's one for two colorless and a green, comes down, you can add two mana to your pool, um, only to cast creature spells. Right. And now or like you... Naga Vitalist right now, which is sure. slower. It's a two mana. Yep. Like things like that, where mm-hmm. it's normally, you know, in years past, you get just a 1 1 elf for one green that taps for a green or something. Yep. Or Birds of Paradise is a good example. Mm-hmm. Zero 1 flyer taps for any color and it's a one cost. You know what I mean? Turns out getting to turn three by turn two, a little too is good. Is good. Yeah. A little too good. A little too good. Um, so yeah, mana dorks are kind of restricted. So okay. my question becomes what do you play? bounty of the that, luxa nah, no no right so play that mm-hmm. um i mean it would have to be early game ramp and i right. don't know that there's enough to make that worth it right um you you're could, probably right that it's it's probably not the way to go yeah i think it might be too slow you could yeah. maybe make an argument for putting some fog and ramp in there if you're worried that your your meta is too fast for it but again uh, turn four turn three four or five win is not <laughs> no that's good that's very yeah. good and if you add it with the addition of spell queller, you get a little bit of defense. Yeah, right? exactly. Maybe it is worth it to put spell queller in. I don't know. You know, it's Just got some it's, it's got enough counter really to deal with a lot of things, mm-hmm. um, which is nice. Unsummon again, winds of rebuke. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it will do a very good job of protecting its mill plan. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, play around with it. Yeah. Uh, again, I want to say it again. This isn't mine. This is not my idea. Des. <laughs> SBMG. it's a cool idea i love mill yeah. we talked about that very early on with the yeah. podcast that my favorite deck was a mill deck yep um my blue black mill as good uh consuming aberration was sort of the top end for that but that aside i do just love the mechanic mill and so it's like mm-hmm. it's exciting to see that in standard and since compelling argument uh was printed once i saw that i was like i love this card even though it's garbage <laughs> And we always joked when we would yeah. draft Amon Cats, like, should we take the compelling argument? <laughs> like, which the answer is no, you should never right, take it. You really but, don't. Um, you know, as a joke, that was sort of a thing. But honestly, like, if it actually becomes a somewhat viable deck, I'm stoked about that. I think yeah, it's great. I am, I'm skeptical, but <laughs> it's got all the trappings of the right deck, right? Yeah, I it's got so. a turn five win. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got repeatable, easy effects. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's hard kind of to uh simply beat on the board yeah yeah so it looks strong yeah, um i, I am so. i'm excited to test it to play with it see what happens uh and this is uh, we've said before i'll say it again this is like a healthy environment for standard right now mm. right they've banned enough i think <laughs> um that they've kind of fixed their mistakes i'm gonna say but to be fair yeah they're not explicit mistakes when they change the way things rotate, mm-hmm. sets interacted that never should have. That's fair. Yeah. Right? So Ulamog was supposed to rotate well before Marvel came into onto the scene. Yeah. And so was Emrakul. Mm-hmm. So 
can you really be mad at wizards i mean yeah a little bit yeah, a little uh bit. <laughs> but anyway but no. at least they're taking steps now to to alleviate that yes um, um the play design group mm-hmm. being the biggest of those mm-hmm. um i think and uh, again we've talked about the play design group so i don't want to harp on it but i do want to mention like there i've heard backlash about the play design group okay. um that people are worried that they're going to ruin wizards and the cards are going to be terrible and all this stuff and think, yeah things you said before right it's not going to be like they, they're not going to ruin the cards or anything like that they're just balancing them um so if there's a powerful card there will be a powerful answer it doesn't that you know is what I mean? my sincere hope that's I, my hope i think and i i do think that's what's going to happen because a lot of the people on the play design group or our team um paul chihan melissa De- del Toro, those are players they're not just game creators or something like that sure. or play testers they actually the play the game yeah um and so they know what people want to see and so their opinions will be heard i think um and i might be wrong but i really hope i'm not well right that's that's always the hope and the desire um i am i am positively spectacle optimistically mm-hmm. skeptical that's what i'm and that's say. fair yeah. like i i honestly don't expect either or yeah um either it's gonna be fine <laughs> and we will maybe forget there's a play design group and we'll just say wow this is a really honestly, fun set to play most likely thing i hope so happen. <laughs> um or it could be you know the exact opposite they they find out that you know they kind of broke it a little bit yeah they make it sale and then the play design group is gone yeah which i hope that's not the case i love i don't say i love i really like the people who are on it yeah i do like the people um, that are on it i don't know them. i can't love them yet uh <laughs> except for paul no uh <laughs> we love you paul uh yeah he's pretty sweet uh so <laughs> i it you never know yeah. right this is new this is a uh, um, new territory yeah. for everybody um including wizards so they're going to be learning exactly. as they go exactly but i think what we can do to hopefully make it a streamlined process mm. is not criticize too much without there being any information of course we yeah, don't yeah, yeah. know anything yet and, so. and mara has said he said in his podcast um drive to work mm-hmm. um he talked about last week uh when people ask him how to be game designers one of the things he mentions always is <clears throat> look at problems in people's games mm-hmm. and think about in your game you're designing how do you want to fix it yeah so magic is in a really unique position where every few months their game changes yeah so that's every few months they have an opportunity to fix a problem mm-hmm. um or make new ones sometimes uh yeah. but the hope is that they solve problems before they become yeah ideally egregious errors yeah not that i think marvel was an egregious error i really don't I don't, I don't either. think it was either. Um, People had so many A cards for that, but hey, we didn't play them. It's another conversation of, for another day. <laughs> nah, one of the follies of net decking, buddy. And we, I wish yeah. I'd made that point on that episode. Yeah, that would have been a good point to make. So the point I was going to make is there is, again... An excessive amount of hate for uh, artifacts. What's the card? Di- it's not disallow, it's... Dispossess. Yeah, dispossess. Two colors, one black. Yeah. Search target player's hand, graveyard, or library <laughs> for an artifact and get, get rid, rid of it. it. Um... There's also wow before by Marvel force, even resolves. <laughs> Amonkhet had by force destroy X target artifacts, release the gremlins. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of there was destroy target artifact or enchantment printed yep. in Amonkhet uh, in white. It's like all over the place. There's a lot of mangle. Well, Mangalorn slows it down, I guess. But like, there's a lot sure. of ways to deal with it. It's yeah. just it wasn't dealt with very well. I don't know. And Teamer Aetherworks towards the end there did a really good job of protecting it because he gets the counters. Right, um, right. And that does make it more difficult, but... But that being said, like, I mean... If they've just resolved an Aetherworks, they don't have mana to cast a counter. So now you yeah. cast Dispossess. <laughs> now you do it. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. I, I guess they could crack it if they've got the energy at that point, to be fair. Because sure. it's a tap and, you know, yeah, they yeah. can respond. Unless you have Mangalorn out. Fair. Or unless you just counter the Aether War. I mean, yeah, but that's <laughs> I mean, for everything. You just go, just counter, just counter Grizzlebrand. It's fine. I mean, but that's why control is viable is because yeah, that's why it'll things. always be in the conversation is like, because it's got a... That's the answer. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you just counter things. Um, all right, so cool deck tech. that's my deck done i'm that's glad my, you brought that in my rant um, on standard done i'm probably gonna build this deck i would love to build it and play it especially because it's cheap i'm just gonna make it as soon as i can because it's awesome heck yeah um so guys we goofed 
Oh boy, did we. We goofed a lot in recent episodes. First what? of all, the last episode had no video. That wasn't our fault. No, it was wasn't. Recording a fa- the, the equipment failed. Um, <laughs> yeah, it did. But like, that was kind of an issue. Oh gosh. Um, yeah, and that was not fun. We also, in the Sunday episode, uh, we were kind of focused on the schedule change and things like mm-hmm. that, and we sort of got sidetracked. We kind of forgot to talk about the question of the week. We sure did. Um, which we posted last Monday, and we got a ton of responses. Like and good 45 ones. It's responses a really cool or conversation something like that. happening um, over there. It is a very good conversation. We will be posting another one. We'll probably have already posted it by the time. We will have already posted it by the time this goes up. Probably yes. yesterday. Um, yeah. But... We forgot to talk about what the best one drop creature in magic is. Um, Oopsie! According to our Instagram users, uh, of which there are many now. Yes. Um, so we had a lot of responses. Yeah, a lot um, of different ones. Ones that I. My favorite Fugitive Wizard. Who? By Man of Madness. Man of Mad. Our you good are, friend and you partner are mad. On Instagram. You are mad. Thanks for that. <laughs> You're the wizard. best. Um, <laughs> We also got some other interesting ones. It uh, does work in Wizard Tribal, I'll we'll say. But like, <laughs> yeah. uh, he drawn crab, I thought was a really interesting one. Again, liking mill. Isn't I that like the crab. one four and they mill <laughs> stuff? Yeah, it like mill stuff for yeah. one. Right. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and every time you play a land, it's like a landfall trigger. Oh, and it mills two. <laughs> it mills like two or something. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I do like he drawn crab. I like he drawn crab too. Actually. Um, Good, good figure of destiny is a very good card uh very lucrative yes. soul warden is good um we only have one vote True. for soul warden i get why we only have one vote because it only really True. works in a deck uh but that deck is cool Still. soul sisters yeah, yeah, is great yeah. spore frog well, that was a little interesting i do not know what that is it plays with one one counters uh, <laughs> okay doesn't do much um <clears throat> all right we're gonna go in reverse order top three answers okay third place mother of runes Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, give a thing protection seems good for yeah. one. Yeah. Um, you can have a limitless blocker that doesn't die to much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it also gets around removal very easily, f- yes. even for other creatures, because yep. you can give the protection to that creature. Yep. Um, so it's almost always a two for one, and that's mm-hmm. just awesome. Yeah, it's uh, very nice. Mother of Runes is a great card. That's why we like Mom. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Um, okay, in second place, we had a tie. Do you want to guess? A tie, I'm going to guess Delver and Death Shadow. Both incorrect. (laughs) Dang. Um, We had Monastery Swift Spear. More than Delver? More than Delver, I like it more than Delver, but I didn't think most people would. No, I didn't think so either. Uh, We also had Birds of Paradise. Okay, no, no, that one makes sense. I buy Birds of Paradise. I don't buy Monastery Swift Spear. I really, 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 really like Swift Spear. I like Swift Spear. Don't get me wrong. It's a great one drop. Um, but here's what I kind of so good. What I'm a little confused about: Goblin Guide got two votes. Well, because he's whereas always Swiss a spear got four. Well, here's the thing with that: Goblin Guide is always a two-two, which is good. Swiss spear can be way more, but Goblin Guide is also a two-two that gives them cards potentially. Right, but I mean, it's always a two-two. You're always going to be getting in for two. Whereas yes. Swiss spear is like hit or miss. You're going to get two sometimes. Sometimes it's going to be three. Other times it's just going to be one. It makes a lightning bolt become five damage. <sighs> yeah, I don't. Know. That's pretty good. Uh maybe. I don't know. It seems a little. Odd. I like Swiss spear a lot. Um, it makes me degenerate. Historically, way better. I'm a little. Yeah. Historically, I'm a little confused as to why Goblin Guide didn't get more. But hey, whatever. Again, um, it's Goblin Guide is great, but it's fixed aggro, right? It's fixed because it gives your opponent upside. Because you can't just print a two-two with haste. Goblin Guide should have gotten more. Uh, Delver also should have gotten more. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. Delver's um, it got two votes. How did Delver not get more? <laughs> um, all right, but birds, but birds, birds, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I do agree with birds. All right, bolt the bird. Uh, both of the second place. I should be mentioning this. Mother of Runes got three votes. Excuse me. Swiss Spear and Goblin Guide both got four. Mm. And with a resounding win of 13 votes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Deathrite Shaman, which yes. we hinted at in the art. It was, I mean, it was in there. Um, we assumed that everybody was going to vote for Deathrite Shaman. <laughs> Pretty much. And they kind of did. It's just kind of the best one drop. Okay, so ever. here's the thing. A one, two for one, just stat wise, it's okay. slightly above. It's fine. You know, it's an yeah. elf, which gives it some even more upside. Right. Um, and then you get three abilities, <laughs> one of which is ramp, 
Um, yes. Dependent on the graveyard, but all of these abilities are. But right. you play fetch lands, so like that's fine. You're gonna have yeah. Um, so ramp. You can nerf them for two, or you can gain two. Like it's a one mana planeswalker. <laughs> like it's awesome. Like yeah, you always death kill the is... death right. Death right's fantastic. You talk about engines for the <laughs> deck, and death right isn't outright. I built my deck around death right shaman, but it is such good uh options yeah. such good like oh, just you have to answer death right oh you have to do because yeah, he'll yeah. sneak up on you if you don't more than ever you should kill the mana dork if it's mm -hmm. death right shaman yeah um, because he's not just a mana dork he's a no, mana he's dork not. and he pings stuff and yeah. he gains them life yeah like, he is a very tricky tricky card i mean there's a reason he was banned in modern he's too good he was deemed way too good and he, um Obviously and he clearly is. was. Yeah. Um, so, but he is played everywhere in Legacy mm -hmm. and Vintage, things like that. Um, As he should he's, be. Yeah. Anywhere he's viable, he should be played. Um, he's very, very good. So, very good. not surprised there. Um, yep. A little surprised about some of the other votes, uh, but that's, that's okay. Um, that's why we do this. And we did get a ton of responses. So, thank you guys. 45 responses. That's sweet. Yeah. That's a lot. I think we got 20 something on the last one. So, yeah. we almost doubled, roughly doubled um yeah so thanks guys way to be there you're the best um now uh moving off of that we do want to mention very quickly also on instagram we have our 500 follower giveaway which is oh, turning yeah. into more like a 700 follower giveaway we're at like 675 right now it's fine um it's been like a week <laughs> like i just i'm a little amazed um you guys have it's really cool. come through it's cool we are choosing the winner on July 20th. We've already got up. almost 70 entries, I believe. Um, so definitely get your entries in. Um, it will be chosen at random completely, so we don't know. We have no clue who it's going to be yet. <laughs> um, but definitely enter. All you have to do is follow us on Instagram, repost the original picture, uh, and tag us either in the comments or something like that Correct. or in the post, and uh, we will get that. We will put your name in, yeah. um, and you will have a chance to win. It's going to be awesome. There's some really cool stuff in the giveaway, including this cup. Um, not that one specifically. Not this one specifically, but one exactly like it. Um, a yeah. sticker and then like four packs, two Amonkhet, one Aether Revolt, one Kaladesh. And we're thinking about throwing in an Hour of Devastation. We're going to do um, it. I think we're going to do it. I'll go ahead and say it. Maybe one or two, actually. Y'all we'll have been so cool. Yeah, the we'll, support we'll has it. been incredible for that. So thank you guys so much for the awesomeness. We love you guys. Um, now... We go into our last segment, sponsored by Grand Slam Grand Comics Slam. and Collectibles, uh, who have been just fantastic. I wish they had a theme song. Out. I could sing every time. <laughs> Me and I'm kind of glad they don't. Um, Clamp and I'll write one. Yeah, it's going to be great. They just going to be metal. We say sponsored by, there's a little effect. Explosions. Anyway. Um. <laughs> there is a Metallica this, show, this weekend in Atlanta. Uh, so it's kind of weighing on my mind. I'm sorry. Um, we both got our gold cards. Do you not like Metallica? No, I like Metallica. No, I, mean, I don't listen to them a lot, but yeah, I like them. All right. That's fair. Um, yeah, we've so already we got, both our got our gold, gold cards. cards. We're just kind of hedging a little bit until ours. We just kind of have to we, wait. Yeah. It's going to happen soon, but for now, guys, it's just, uh, we're just looking. We're just going to look. We're going to talk yeah. about what we find to be very good in a limited environment. Um, and I got my first pick for sure. What'd you get there, bud? Um, so yep. <laughs> my rare is Dispossessed, which we already talked about would have been great against Aetherworks. Um, but in limited, it's just not as good. Um, there's not that many targets for it. Um, my pick is 100% Scaled Behemoth. Um, a 6-7 seven for 7 with Hexproof is crazy good. Yeah. Uh, Hexproof is super overpowered in limited. Um, so yes. definitely that being the pick. Um... So I sort of sorted these by color as like cards that I would consider and that I would like in decks, not okay. necessarily first picks, but uh, Desert Ceradon, I think is a good top end in a red deck, as well as Nefcrop Entangler being an okay two drop. It's just sort of filler. Um, in blue, Shimmer Scale Drake and River Serpent are great. Um, uh -huh. I also got an Essence Scatter and a Sensor, which I also like in the control variants, which you shouldn't do too much control. Not always, but it's nice. Um, but like Essence Scatter is yeah. great in limited. Don't count on control, but putting counters in your deck is not a bad idea. You can consider Essence Scatter removal, basically. Yeah, right? oh, like totally. Two mana removal. I would. Um, in white, Wing Shepherd and Compulsory Rest, uh, just decent cards. Mm -hmm. Wing Shepherd is, I've found to be pretty good. It's a little expensive, obviously, yeah. but you get to cycle it. 
Um, and compulsory rest is just pseudo removal. Nice. So, but yeah, scale, scale being yep. 100% the pick. <laughs> so my rare was Hezret's Favor. Uh, you don't play it limited. Um, no. It's an enchantment for two and a red. It says at the beginning of your combat on your turn, you may have target creature you control, get plus two, plus oh, and gain haste. If you do, sack it at the end of the turn. I mean, cool. So there's a deck made around this that I like uh, yeah. that is not very good, but it's fun. <laughs> it's kind of like that... Um, uh, you steal a thing what's what are those called those effects um betray i don't remember active treasons maybe treason, treason effects treason effects treason effects anyway you take creatures a thing and then you use hezret's favor to pump them have them swing and then they die yeah that's pretty cool it's pretty cool it's fun yeah. it's way too slow to be competitive anyway um <laughs> but that is definitely not the pick and limited i don't have a ton of great things my four considerations uh true heart twins it's pretty good, and mm-hmm. it's nice top end. Uh, On Crop Crasher is a really nice aggressive card. Splendid Agony, pretty good removal. Uh, Naga Oracle for seeing cards and getting them into your hand and graveyard. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a nice body for four at 2-4. Two, um, of the things that are first pickable, I think it's got to be either the Twins or the Crasher, but I really like the Oracle. So for me, it's between the Twins and the Splendid Agony, to be honest. I don't um, think Splendid Agony's first pick. I don't know that it's first pick, but your pack is pretty garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. I think the Twins is probably the I think the I have to pick. choose. Do I want to be aggressive and go into red something or safer? I think Splendid Agony's it. I think it is safer. It's yeah. a safer pick. Yeah, I think um, so. There's a lot of good black in this set also. Yeah. I think. I think I'd probably go with the Twins. That's cool. Um, yeah. It makes sense to me. Yeah, it gets beefy and scary, and I mean, I like it. we had a game where we got very, very like insane damage in because yeah. of a true heart. Twist. So with true heart, whenever you exert a creature, creatures you control, everybody gets plus one plus out. It's an anti yeah. effect. So it's we were looking at like twenty eight damage. Yeah, in one yeah. combat, it was insane. It was like turn six or seven. Like yeah. it was a little late, but oh, it was man. insane. But late we game, did, that's... I think, win that game. But yeah, we did. I mean, swinging twenty eight damage <laughs> when we drafted mono red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We drafted mono red. We drafted mono red. And went like and did seven and two well. or something? Yeah, like it was pretty know. awesome. Or five and two, I that's, think. It was yeah, out of seven. Um, but yeah, cool, cool, cool. Um, anything else you want to talk about while we're here? How are um, you doing today? You doing good? Yeah, I had some. I had a really good dinner. That's good. My wife made some a very delicious food. My girlfriend made some delicious food. Yeah. It was nice. great. We're not sexist. They're just better cooks than us. <laughs> That's very true. Way better. My wife yeah. went to Johnson and Wales, so I kind of am spoiled. My girlfriend just likes to cook, <laughs> and, and she's very and good. It's tasty. It. Yeah. Um, oh man. All right. Well, now I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um. All right, guys. So we appreciate you hanging out ah. with us for the standard episode again. This is a new schedule. This is the Wednesday now. Yeah, Get used to right. it uh <laughs> you no. you um and no, but we do appreciate we gotta, yeah we, we need to get used to it also to. um we do appreciate you guys hanging out with us and are we uh, are we fun. posting a new question this week uh yeah we will we're gonna save that for the yesterday. post or do you want to save it now say it now you're gonna, you're gonna put, save it we're gonna save it we're gonna save it we're gonna save it we'll save it um all right but we'll have posted it by the time this goes up probably the day before oh well then that so. was a weird thing to say you already know it answer the question <laughs> <laughs> oh beautiful all right guys uh thank you again for hanging out with us thank you to our sponsor grand slam and to andrew uh for the cups and things like more that on that soon the that's a developing story it is a developing story you'll uh, uh, you'll hear more about andrew in the you future will. you definitely will but thanks again guys we're gonna get out of here yes, my name are. is kevin my name is will and this has been it resolves